Crafty family, it's me again. Aren't you sick of me yet? Are you sick of me? Because I'm sick of me. Uh, okay. So, today, I got something really cool to show you. I put up on my Facebook that I was going to show you. And, or I asked if you guys wanted to see it. And I showed a picture and you guys said yes. Um, or those of you that are on my Facebook. Um, I made these cute little purses. Aren't they adorable? They're so cute. And you won't believe what I made them out of. They're just so adorable. I made them out of lunch bags. Lunch bags. Lunch bags. Um, and of course, it's the name is eluding me of where I've seen this. This is not my idea. What else is new? Um, it's like really come up with something original. But I just, I see things and I just want to make it for you guys. Um, just because, you know, I'm making it, so I might as well make some on camera. Um, I will put the link in my description of where, uh, the original post of where I saw these at. Several people make them, but the one that I saw, I'll put in the thing. I can't remember her name now. It's like completely slipping my mind because I can't think. Um, but the link will be below. So you'll see where I, where I seen this at. But isn't this adorable? And it's a cute little bag. And it's actually a bag. So you could put like baked goods for the holidays. Now I'm saying you put cookies candy you can put treats you can put presents and it's a little purse and it's so adorable and i did this one too which this one i did slightly different than that one whereas i painted the bag green which i don't really recommend because it was kind of a pain in the ass but it still came out cute and of course i got some paint on the inside so i mean you can still put baked goods in there baked goods in there but you might want to wrap them if you're going to paint it painting it was kind of a pain i don't necessarily recommend painting it i just tried it for the sheer hell of it just to see how it would come out so anyway let's get started okay so what you're going to need is a lunch bag and you're going to need a lunch bag scrapbook paper um something to cut the lunch bag in the scrapbook paper with some glue or a tape runner and a piece of ribbon and a hole punch and that's pretty much the gist um so what first thing you're gonna do is take your bag and you're gonna cut it off um you want four inches from the bottom so you're going to do four inches from the bottom just like that save these because you can use these in journals so don't throw that out Okay, and once you got your little lunch bag, set that aside, and then you're going to need cardstock or scrapbook paper. Now, I did two different ways on these. This one, I put a matted, I'm going to show you the exact way that she did it, and then there's another way to do it that I can kind of tell you about, um, where you don't have to mat it. Like, if you just want to use scrapbook paper, like on this one, it's not matted. It's just scrapbook paper. Like, if you don't want to waste paper and, and do double layer and all this crap, you don't have to. You can you can just use scrapbook paper and cover it and then embellish it with little things. Um, but I'll show you how she did it. And actually, I have to run and get some paper, so I'll be right back. Hold on. Okay. So I got my piece of my mat, like my first layer. And what we're going to do is we're going to cut this first layer. You're going to cut the cardstock at five and a half by six and a quarter. So I'm going to cut it. Where am I at here? <laughs> I'm like backwards. Five and a half. Let's see. You know I am with cutting. I suck. So that's at five and a half. By six and a quarter. So we're going to cut that piece. Okay. And then you're going to need another piece that's going to be five and a half by four and a half. Which this is not big enough and I may have to go get another. Well, yeah, it is big enough actually. Sweet, it's exactly five and a half by, what did I say, four and a half? No, four and a quarter, five and a half by four and a quarter. So that is the right size. Good, I didn't want to have to get my ass back up again. I'm lazy. So these are your two pieces of paper of this. Okay, so then you're going to want to cut out your pattern paper. 
And for your patterned paper, choose, you know, coordinating. Like I grabbed this because I thought it would look cute, kind of. And if the purple's kind of off, maybe I'll choose something else. I don't like the way that purple is now that I see it in the light. Let me grab this. Ugh. Let's grab a different one. I didn't realize that was such a dark purple and the contrast is weird. This might be better. Yeah, I think this will be better. I opened right up to it. The only problem with this book is it's so hard to get the paper out without ripping it. I've had this paper forever and a day. So we're not going to use that one. I just think this one will go better, in my opinion. I don't think it would matter that much, but you know what I'm saying. So now we got our pattern paper. Get my cutter back up here again. The pattern paper, we are going to cut a little bit smaller, obviously, to because this is going to be the mat and that's going to be on top of it. Um, so the pattern paper is going to be... Blah, 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 blah. Um, you're going to need... <clears throat> Where am I at? Sorry. You're, <laughs> you're going to need um, two pieces at five and a quarter by four inches. So five... Turn this so it's not wonky. Five and a quarter. That's not right. Five and a quarter. Five and a quarter by four. Okay. So I need another one at four, so it's two of them at five and a quarter by four. Did I screw that up? No. And then you need one piece at five and a quarter. Is this five and a quarter maybe? Yeah. Five and a quarter, which is this size it turned out, by one and three quarters. I always have to double check measurements because I forget so fast what I'm doing. So that's what you should have for your mat or for on your mat. So it'll go over. I'll show you in a second. So that's what you need. Those are all the papers you'll need. Um, so you can get rid of that. So now you've got these papers. I'll repeat what I said before. You have five and a half by six and a quarter, five and a half by four and a quarter, two pieces of five and a quarter by four inch, and one piece of five and a quarter by one and three fourths. That's what you should have. Now you're going to take your largest, I call the plain ones the matte pieces because we're matting, you know, this on top of this, yada, yada, yada. You're going to take this one, the bigger one, you're going to get your scoreboard. If you don't have a scoreboard, use a ruler. You're going to put it long ways on your scoreboard, and you're going to score two inches down. Okay? Two inches down and fold. That's going to be the part that flaps open right here. Okay? Or no. Yeah, that's going to be this part that flaps. It comes over. I don't know what I was thinking. Er, and that's the only time you need your scoreboard. Okay, so now, basically, you're going to put it together. You're going to take your piece after, you know, you, you can do it before you fold it, so it doesn't matter. But then you're going to take your mat pieces, and you're going to assemble it like so. And you're going to run your glue runner, or whatever you plan on doing, which I'll try this thing, which pisses me off on a daily basis. And you are going to just run some glue. You can use wet glue if you do. Just do it, you know, don't like go crazy because it will buckle. You know, like if you use Mod Podge or something. Like, here we go. Now it's not working. Come on. When it works, it works good. But when it doesn't work, it just really doesn't work. Um, but if you use like quick dry adhesive or tacky glue, just go a little bead around the edge and then just go like that a little bit in the middle. Um, and you're going to put it on there as evenly as you can. Eyeball. Good enough. I'm going to do this piece. 
Again, this thing sucks. I really need. I want that ATG gun that I seen recently. Um, now I can't remember. It's something Max or something. It's supposed to be like really good. I need one of those suckers. I have one, but I don't like it. It's the Teresa Collins um, thingamabobber. Um, I, I don't really care for it. I thought I would, but I don't. I don't like the way the glue comes out. And then you're going to put this one there. And then, of course, you're going to do this one. I usually just go around the edge and put a few in the middle. Like that. It's good enough. It's just for a treat bag. Eyeball it. Good enough. Okay, now, what you're going to do is, the best way to remember to do this is before you even, because I forgot, like, on this one, I forgot to punch the holes for my ribbon, so I ended up putting buttons, which is fine. You could do that. It still works. It's fine. But if you want the ribbon to be kind of hidden and all this other stuff, before you assemble it to the bag part itself, punch your holes. Um, what you're going to do is just eyeball it, and where you want to punch it is, like, if you're looking at this with the flap here, you want to punch them here right under the score line a little bit. So... You're going to use a big hole because you're going to put ribbon through it. So basically, I just went all the way in with my crocodile on the biggest side, like that, so that they're even on both sides, and like that, and there's your two holes. And now you're going to get your ribbon, which I have some here, and I'll use the purple. I think I'll use the purple. Let's see what other colors could I use. Mm. Me. Me. I kind of think I just like the purple sheer ribbon. Yeah, that works. That works, because I think it'll match fine. But use any ribbon or string or twine or whatever you want to use. You could probably even make it out of paper, honestly. Um, make like a paper, like a little paper one. Probably does not have to be. And you're going to pick your length. Doesn't matter what length it is, just, you know allow for about an inch on in the inside of each hole so if I want it to be like that big let's see like that so I will allow a little bit of room and I try to hold on to the tape that that comes on these so it doesn't go all over the place but yeah it doesn't always work out so well not always so from here what you're going to do is feed your ribbon from the outside in on each side. Just feed it in a little bit. Feed it in a little bit. Hold on. And then you're going to turn it over. You're going to take some scotch tape because that's all you need. There's a little bit of scotch tape. You're going to make sure your ribbon is even so that it like flows from one side to the other. So fix it if you need to so that it'll lay flat on the inside and not be all wonky. And you only need like an inch, maybe three quarters of an inch. And then you're gonna take a little scotch tape because this is not gonna show and it's, it'll, it's gonna have adhesive over top of it as well. And you're going to tape it down like that. So that's all you need to do there because it'll have ad additional adhesive and plus like I said you're not holding rocks in the damn thing you know you're holding treats it's not meant as a real purse which I'm sure you've gathered <laughs> um so after that then you take your bag now the the whole purpose of the bag is so that it goes on this flat side and this flat side so we have to work with that with it folded because it's easier to do so you have to fold it and then do it you know like you know what I'm saying like this is gonna go like this obviously this is gonna be left unadhered adhered unadhered I don't know what that means unadhered to this it's just gonna be a flap but you're gonna adhere it like this okay so you're gonna put the adhesive on the bag not on the cardstock because if you put it on the cardstock and you put this on it's gonna be sticking 
all over. So on the bag, I made that mistake one time. <laughs> Even though the lady in the video said it, I still screwed up. So pick whatever side you want to start with and you're going to put it on the bag. And again, you're just going to go around and then put some down on like that. And then you want to make sure it's straight so that the bottom of your bag is there. And you're going to line it up so it covers up the ribbon, which I'm going to have to look at this a certain way. Like that. Just like that. Okay? Now, before you put the adhesive on this side, obviously, you're going to want to fold down this flappy do. Let's see how I did this. Yeah, you're just going to want to fold it down because that's where it's going to stick to. Is like you want it to you want it to lay flat. I'm just trying to get it. There we go. So, your adhesive is going to Did I do that right? Yeah. So, your adhesive is just going to go on this little part here even though it sticks out a little bit there. It doesn't matter cuz what we're going to do is when we put this on top, we're going to even this up. So we're not going to be like, you know, you're not going to want it to be wonky or with the bat. You're going to want to even it up with the cardstock underneath so that it all stays straight, regardless of how it goes on to here. If it goes on to here uneven, it doesn't matter as long as this part's straight, because then it'll obviously open straight. Does that make sense? You'll see. So again, adhesive, adhesive to the rescue. We're in a sticky situation. Stuff is sticky. Um, also, you want to keep in mind that you want this to go over the flap too. So you don't want it to you don't want to be above the score mark of this part so that when it folds over, it's kind of weird. If it does, you can just cut this off a little bit. So it's really not that big of a deal. But you do want to even it up with the bottom purple piece. Like in my case, it's purple. Not worry about the bag so much. You want to try to get that as even as possible because then it'll sit straight and look straight. And see if it, you see how when it's folding over, it's kind of catching a little bit. It's not really a big deal. It'll still fold over. But if you want to and it concerns you and it's annoying to you like it was slightly to me, since the bag has plenty of room up here, you can give it a little trim. You can just get a little trim trim. I mean, I'm talking like a little bit. And I just went through and I usually just go ba -dum, ba -dum, ba -dum. And now it folds over without making that note. Well, it does a little bit, but not as bad. Doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter. Um, so there it is. That is your little purse. You also need some Velcro. I forgot about that. Um, you don't need it. I guess there's other ways to do it. You can make like a little closure with a ribbon. You know, what I mean? you know what I mean? Like you, you need some way to keep the flap from being flippy, flappy, floppy. So I have little, I love these things. They're so thin and perfect and wonderful. These little Velcro dots. I think I got these at Walmart. Um, I absolutely love these damn things. They're so cute. So the one is like, it's like translucent transparent. You can barely see it when it's on. So I usually put that one on here so that when you open it, you don't see it. And then I put the fuzzier white one up here. And what I do is I eyeball it like so in the middle, wherever. And then I take the back part and I put it adhesive side up, but down onto the little fuzzy part. You know what I'm saying? So that when you hit it down like that and push it, now it'll just be right perfect. See what I'm saying? Perfect. Perfect. And basically, uh, that's it. And you can put your treats inside. And how cute are these for Christmas presents or, you know, adorable. Adorkable. So cute. But that's not all. We're going to adorn this just a little bit, just a wee bit more. Um, now that we got that on there, what I'm going to do is take some of this extra card stock. And I'm going to take a one of these punches, little scallop dude. I wish I had a little bigger one, but I don't. But this is fine. Take a scallop, put that there, and then if I could find something, maybe a button. Do I have a purple button or something cute? 
because you can adorn it with a poiple button, which I don't think I have a poiple button, do I? Oh man, I don't have a purple button. I don't think I do. Or a sticker, um, which I don't have on hand and I'm not gonna worry about, but um, you know what I'm saying. For this, I'll take a little quick dry. And what you do is, um, whoa, a little quick dry, dude, seriously. Who do you think you are? That was a lot of quick dry. And you're gonna put like a third of it hanging off the end at the bottom. I don't do it halfway. I mean, because to me it's not thick enough. That's a lot of waste of glue. I love quick dry, man, it's my favorite glue. Um, so yeah, and then I'll stick a little sticker in there later. But yeah, so there's your little flippy flappy and your little Percy Wersey. Isn't that like the cutest thing ever? Oh my god. But like I said, you do not have to, I'm not gonna show you this, but you don't have to mat it down. You could just make your pattern cardstock the size, like I said, um, five and uh, five and a half by six and a quarter, and that's all you need. So if you don't wanna waste paper and you just wanna do a quick and easy one where it's not matted, which I think the matted ones look adorable, you could just use this. You know what I'm saying? You don't have to layer it if you don't want to. I would just use a thicker paper than this if you're gonna use that and that's it. This is a really thin sheet paper. Use a little bit like this type of more cardstock or like what I matted it with, um, a little thicker, just so it's a little sturdier. But yeah, so that's the most adorable thing I could ever freaking come up with, or I didn't come up with, or you know, do for you guys. And um, yeah, so you can do them for Christmas. You can do them for birthdays. This one I put smile on, um, which I had these little cutouts and I think I still have some in here and I should probably do another one. Here's one that says laugh. I'll pop that sucker on there. I'll do that off camera, but how cute is that? Put laugh, you could put little cutouts, stickers, adorn it, have your kids help you, you know. So I just thought I'd show you guys that because it's freaking awesome because I love things like bags and envelopes and oh yeah, and I made all this these envelopes and I actually decorated the ones that I showed in that last video. I made Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, put a little Rudolph, Merry Christmas, put another Rudolph, vintage picture. Um, yeah, so all these are like pocket letter. That's that last video I did where I did the envelopes. So yeah, that's it. That's what I got. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, make sure you do what you love, love what you do. Be nice to everybody. I love you guys. Um, if you make some bags, send me some pictures. Pinkpoodlecrafts at gmail.com. Don't forget we're doing the secret, semi-secret Santa thing. If you haven't seen that video, go check it out. Um, where we're kind of exchanging some gifts amongst ourselves and stuff. Go check that video out. It's like this, it's the one right before last or something like that. I don't know. It says semi-secret Santa. Check it out. Because, uh, you know, uh, yeah, so we're having some fun. Love you guys. Bye.